news about do we have any news about board membership? Membership, um, I, I've not received an official letter, but uh, Reverend Case is uh, um, yeah. not going to serve on the committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just make a notation that uh, Reverend McKay's name will be uh, taken off the uh, council. Okay. I see that Rachel is here. Hi. Yeah. Rachel, hi. Hi, everyone. And I think it is Chris. Oh, Hello. there's Chris, yep. Rachel, our meetings only last sometimes a half hour. Would you like to be a, um, a, a voting member? We can sure. vote. What? Sure. Okay, I make I make the motion that uh, we nominate Rachel uh, Ricard as a member of our YSB advisory board. All in favor? Aye. Aye, Rachel. It's so good to <laughs> see you. you. My gosh, yeah. You need a second on that. Okay, then. Um, second. Yes, second on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, are there any, are there any uh, additions or corrections to the minutes of February 9th? Okay, so. If not, will they'll be approved as presented? Yeah, I, I make the motion that they're approved as presented. Second, please. If there's a second. Second. Yeah. I think I saw Stephen first. <laughs> we'll get you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Our guest is Angela Duhem from CIRAC. And you're up, Angela. Sure. It's nice to see everyone again. I'm the Associate Director at CRAC, which is a nonprofit, if you don't know, located in Norwich, but we cover all of Eastern Connecticut, focusing on providing mini grants to the towns and providing um, prevention and education awareness around substance abuse, problem gambling, the opioid crisis, suicide prevention as well. Um, so I just have some couple of um, sort of key things that are happening right now. I do have some staff that will be able to participate with your group on a regular basis. So we were definitely a little bit, you know, struggling like everybody with staffing and returning and figuring things out. So, but we're, we're finding our groove now and that's wonderful. Um, and as we sort of getting back into being able to, you know, provide the mini grants. And, and, and for those of you that may not know, um, Voluntown has received our local prevention grant for quite a few years, as far back as I can remember. And I know I've been around since 2007. So let's, let's go back even longer than that. So, and I'm always sort of a, I always champion and pride over Voluntown as the small community example of how to really run and do this work. And so um, always um, happy to be able to join you guys and see how much that you've grown and been able to, to sustain over time. It's really amazing. Thank you. Our biggest three issues, um, Adam, I appreciate your email and response already. We, as legislation, you know, as time happens, we have to act a little fast. We get involved with testifying and helping to advocate for different laws and policy, and they turn around pretty quickly. So we just found out um, that, so what we are at CRAC is a, what's called a regional behavioral health action organization. And it is the merging of an entity that used to be solely dedicated to the mental health and the entities that were solely dedicated to substance abuse. So the, the, the integration happened a few years back to do that. But there was no legislation on the books that read and supported the structure of the new entities. Um, so we've been working on that for a few years because obviously having that legislation is what keeps us in the structure to receive the federal and state funding that we can then pass down to the towns. So this bill is going to, I guess, I, I'm waiting for the lobbyist to contact tonight uh, with the official information, but it sounds like it'll go to public hearing on Monday. And Adam, thank you so much for offering to write a letter of support. 
um, to to do that. And again, it just just if you can just point out any things that you've benefited from the local prevention council over the years is really the the key things of from them to hear those local efforts. Uh, uh, Angela, just a point of information, Dee Dee, for the minutes, put down HB for House Bill five one four nine. And uh, this is 27 pages of legislation that uh, I will send out to our YSB LPC board. And uh, I, I, as I said before, Angela, I'll draft a letter and I'll send a CC to our YSB board. And uh, I'll also send a CC to uh, Brian Lanou, our state rep. <laughs> and Heather Summers, our state senator, because generally speaking, they follow along and they get behind something. And our legislators up in this area have played a major role in the funding for YSB and LPC um, you know, uh, initiatives. And years ago, our rep, Steve Mikatel, was actually part of the first uh, original legislation for this that really strengthened uh, you know, the YSBs and, and which in, in strengthened our LPC uh, across the state. So thank you for giving me a few minutes to speak. Absolutely. And, you know, when you see this bill, if so, those of you that look at it, I, it's it's wordy, it's long, it's 27 pages, just to sort of, it, you know, some of it might be like a little, huh, the, the, the decision was made at this point, because it's important to have the statue, we can revisit the language um, and revise it in the years ahead. So, but in order for us to move forward, we wanted to make sure that we get it and, on the books. You know, are, they, are you going to be allowed to testify? Monday is going to be tricky with meetings, this last minute moving things around, but we're going to see if I can figure out how to move some staff around and make it happen on Monday. It always, it, that. Yeah. yeah, it's a challenge. I mean, we do anticipate that it'll go forward. Um, there's a lot of support, like you said, so that's a positive thing. We did just actually offer testimony to the opioid settlement that was on Friday. There was a hearing for that. Um, from our standpoint, we really wanted to emphasize the prevention. So there's going to be the opioid settlement dollars that you've probably seen in the news and, and, and you know, all the money that will be coming to the towns, coming to the state. Um, a lot of it will be in treatment and obviously restoration and issues that have happened in, for families and victims and those things. But we definitely wanted to make sure as they get ready to roll out their advisory committee to determine the funding that prevention has a place. Um, so it was really good that we did that because I, it was getting a little bit lost and then it came back as a refocus on Friday. So hopefully down the road, we'll see some more additional opportunities for some funding around that opioid issue. So that brings me to my second issue to just let you know that the issue with Narcan in schools is a hot topic button right now. Um, and it was sort of coming out of the overdose that, that had happened in Hartford and, and made the news. And so we have, were able to provide school systems Narcan if you have a school policy. Um, and sort of we have, um, Michelle's been, Divine, the director, executive director, has been sort of helping with developing any kind of school policies and then we're able to provide training. So it's something that you can look at internally and contact us if that's something that you need or wanna just have on hand and we can help you to expand that and have that for the school systems or staff members, whichever you decide if you, what you need, you know, for in terms of who would make sense. Um, and the third issue would be our suicide prevention grant and funding. So that's been our hugest issue that we've had additional funding for. So, um, you know, obviously we, we've had funding in the past, but not funding to this level where we're able to help assist communities. So if you do experience a loss and it is across the lifespan, um, could be a resident, it could be a young person. Um, if there's any community impact that happens and you would like um, us to come in and help develop a, what we're calling sort of the community response team or the postvention team, um, where they can sort of start to work out what that would look like. If there would be some groups, trainings, additional supports at your town level, that would be more of that community sense and rather than having to necessarily rely on larger entities or hospitals, this would be an additional support 
that perhaps you could have right in your town. Yep. Angela, will it be a form to complete for any grants? Uh, no, at this point, we have the funding and the staff to help with assisting with that. So if that's something we just brought on a staff member, Mark Irons, he retired from the state. He was in juvenile justice for a long time. And so he's our point person right now for assisting okay. the communities. Um, in, in the past, um, we, we have had an occasion where we have had to deal with a, a suicide of a, a student who was, uh, you know, two years out from, uh, you know, graduating from uh, Voluntown Elementary School. But our, our crisis intervention team uh, has a whole plan of action for su suicide prevention. Wow. And if, um, if we were to write a grant, I would want to see how the uh, YSB and the LPC and uh, representatives from our school, uh, you know, crisis intervention team might possibly get some training or release time if CRAC has some instructions, instructors, but I haven't talked to the group yet, but I'm interested in how we can enhance and improve existing uh, resources. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other thing is if there's any presentations that CRAC is doing directly for students, or if there's some general preventative work, that might be a component of a grant that, that I would be interested in, you know, uh, helping develop. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I will keep my eyes open. And, and in the meantime, just so that you know, I do have um, you know, we do have a couple of trainers on hand that we could just provide for you if you needed that for the question, persuade, refer, or talk saves lives program. Oh, th that doesn't preclude, yes. We would call yeah. SWAC immediately and other counselors. And if we have a situation where we need help, uh, well, some of our high schools uh, would immediately send uh, counselors, social workers, and other people here to give us support. So we do have a network, but it's always good to review that and enhance it. So thank sure. you. Sure. And if you want universal training for your staff, I can provide online codes for online training self-paced. Okay. Does, does this program extend to the town itself or just to YSPs? It, the training could be community-wide. Okay, Absolutely. because we have had uh, several situations in town of re with residents. And um, I think maybe if contacting the sel selectmen, it might be good to include them in whatever training or program that they'd be willing to undertake. Absolutely. So we could do it for a senior center. We've done it for, you know, could for do it just an open call at the library for residents. Oh, it could be open to everybody in any way. It's called gatekeeper training. So it really is more of a literacy educational one on one sort of getting comfortable and talking. Okay. So it could be a library program too? I could, we could offer it in a library. Yep. We, we've been okay. offering it on Zoom and things as well too. So, yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's it for me. That's quite a bit. Busy, busy. <laughs> okay. Does anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, does anybody have any questions for Angela? Well, if not, then Angela, thank Diana, you so much. I just, Diana, I'd just like to make a statement while Angela is here. And uh, I want to thank Melinda for attending uh, many of the CRAC meetings. And for Angela and her crew, uh, you've been so supportive of her YSB and LPC. And we deeply appreciate uh, being able to have those resources available. And we anticipate to continue with our track record to make sure that we utilize as many of those as possible. And uh, thank you for all the work you do. And you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. It's not going to last long, but I know you have a busy schedule, especially <laughs> with this legislation. But Angela, thank you so much. Thank yes. you so much. I am going to run to do some legislative work tonight and against the, the clock. So okay, everybody's it's good to see you again. Take <laughs> care and okay. let me know if you need anything in the immediate future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, 
our budget report. Yes, I sent you the pages. The balance right now is $32,453.45. And uh, I guess we could have a motion to approve the budget report. And please note that Melinda is always busy and she's been setting up a whole bunch of programs that we're going to hear about in a few minutes. And we do have the funds to proceed and things uh, are opening up because the uh, mask as an option is out there right now. And there's more opportunities that have developed uh, over the last several weeks. Okay, can we have a motion to approve the budget report? Joanne Blake? I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. All right. Youth safety and fitness. Is that you, Allison? No? Okay. I, I don't so. know where that came from then. Uh, report by the YSB director. <clears throat> okay. All right, so um, the programs I have now have been doing really well. We do have a lot of kids uh, signed up for Lego. I'm kind of at my max. I have 15 kids out of second grade that signed up. So all the programs are going very well. Volleyball, um, kids are very excited about that. That's going very well. Um, so going forward, uh, circuitry, grades three and four, I mean, everything is pretty much at, at its max. The kids are really starting to enjoy this. Um, going forward, um, the, I would like to hire Megan Glidden for an escape room. Uh, she got some breakout EDU kits um, online. The program would be at April 4th, 11th, 25th, and May 2nd from 3.30 to 4.30 for grades seven and eight, max 10 students. Megan will be paid a total of three hours prep and six hours for class time at a rate of $33 per hour. I'd also like to hire Heather Miller to assist in the program at her professional hourly rate at 1.5 hours for a total of six hours. Okay, we have a motion. Stephen, second please. Blake. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So carried. Um, cookie baking, it was brought up um, by Lynn and Allison that kids might enjoy that. So I'd like to hire Lynn Lawrence and Allison Page for a cooking baking program on April 4th, 11th, 25th, May 2nd from 3.30 to 4.30. Do you think that's gonna be enough time, Allison, if you're baking? She mentioned it that the first week we would make the dough and the second week we would cook it while making like rice crisp a, a small treat while we make it. So it would be okay. Okay. So that would be 3 30 to 4 30 for grades five and six, max 10 students. Lynn and Allison will each be paid for a total of three hours prep and six hours hours for class at a rate of $33 per hour. The cost of the materials will not exceed $160. Um, so some of the materials is food. And some of it's actually the baking equipment, which um, if this goes well, I'd like to hold it again in May with a different uh, grade level. So we'd be able to use the equipment more than just once and then hold it again next year. And this would be done in that room. I'm not sure what it's called. At the, the end, end, end of junior high. Yep, room 17. Room 17. Okay. Can we have a motion for cookie baking? I make a motion. Rachel, Joanne. Okay, any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Um, I am also working on a program for grades three to four. I'm waiting to hear back from Kayla. Um, so I'll probably have more for that for next, uh, next meeting. Um, fishing Derby, Steven Steninger, the dad, has secured fish for the Derby. Um, we are meeting this evening to discuss the event at seven o'clock tonight. 
um, to come up with um, prizes and just all the logistics to make sure this hat this works. Uh, next, Screen Free Week will be held the week of May 9th through 13th, and Family Night will coincide with the book fair on May 13th. I would like to hire Haley Davis to oversee Screen Free Week. Haley will be paid up to 15 hours prep and 10 hours for the program. I'd also like to hire Hillary Saroy to oversee Math Night for Screen Free Week. She will be paid up to 12 hours prep and three hours for the program. Below is the, uh, I have a cost for each um, night for the supplies. So it's probably two votes. I, I, two votes for the hires? You, you might want to vote on hiring them first and then I have a bunch of other stuff to go with it. Bunch of other stuff. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm spending a lot of money. <laughs> Good. Okay, right. then we will have a motion for hiring um, the two people you said or three? Yep, two. Two people for Screen Free Week. Make a motion to Chris. hire Haley and uh, we have Haley and Hillary. Okay, Joanne, okay, any further discussion? All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Okay, so one of the nights is math night. Um, supplies will cost up to $50 and a raffle prize for 10 for a total of $60. I don't know if you want me to go with each one at a time, Diana. What's the best thing to do? Well, how many how many items do you have? I think it, personally, I think just doing it all in one motion because it's okay. all, right. all the same program. Okay, giant board games, carnival party rental, $325, raffle prize for $10, total of $335. Crafts and cooking, materials up to $100, raffle prize 10, total $110. Marine exploration touch tank from Mystic Aquarium, $325 for the program, materials 50, raffle prize 10 for a total of $385. Luau night, Luau night and Rock Wall, carnival party rental 325, materials 50, pizza 100, raffle prize 10, uh, 380, $485. Um, the rock wall cost was already approved last month. Um, so this is, we haven't had screen free week in a while. And Christopher said to make a big bang out of it. So we're making a big bang. Okay. Do you have a, a total? No. Okay. Can you give me an approximate? Probably yep, 1600 or so. Uh, about fourteen fifty. Fourteen fifty. Okay. Up, up to fourteen fifty. Let's go with that. All right. The, the only thing missing is a band. Oh, you're offering something, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we have a motion for fourteen hundred fifty dollars for activity supplies? Blake, did I see your hand go up? And Rachel, yeah. okay. I like spending. I like spending money. <laughs> okay. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carry. Yeah, uh, Diana, can we go back to the uh, three and four year, third graders and fourth graders? Melinda, uh, is that something that we want to have wait until the April meeting? Or if there's something that you're planning and you have some ideas, I would uh, urge you to just, you know, try to implement them and advertise it because I really do think that that kind of wraps up the program and, and heads to all grades. So if you have something right. that- So I don't about, really have an idea, but I would like to hire a staff member for up to three hours prep, six hours um, class time and materials up to 150. Uh, then for the third and fourth grade uh, program, I would uh, uh, I would make the motion to approve a pre preliminary allocation uh, to support you in the planning process. How's that? Okay. Okay, we have a motion. Can we have a second? Steven, any discussion? All in favor, aye. Opposed? 
So care. Okay, and then next, um, the Recreation Commission is going to be putting on um, what we call Voluntown Fun Day. And that is gonna be on June 4th from one to eight. I would like to hire Kitty's Colors Party Services to do face painting on June 4th from one to five for Voluntown Fun Day. The cost is $100 per hour for a total of 400 for four hours. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be going away. So I would uh, like to hire someone to kind of just hang out there, OISB staff. Um, and this Kitty Colors, she did it at the Tricentennial and she was wonderful. She did a great job. She was really, really good with the kids. So I'm very excited to get her. Um, actually, Allison, Mr. Rasco and I actually got um, painted. <laughs> we got little tattoos, so it was fun. Um, so I guess I would like to also put in there, hire a staff member for, for the four hours. So that's $400 plus the staff member? Yeah, and, and I'm not sure if it might be just a pair. So I'll go up with $150 total Okay. for the staff member. All right. So can we have a motion for face to paint for the face painting and a staff member up to a total of $550? Motion, Rachel and Stephen. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? So carry. And I think that's all I have. Um, I did. Um, I did go to the mental health coalition that Allison is um, teaching, observing, uh, overseeing. And it was really nice to see them. It was a bunch of different kids. Um, and they were just very much engaged, very interested in it. Um, they came up with some good ideas. I enjoyed listening to that. Um, and they did actually ask Allison if we could offer this um, every, every Tuesday. So that's something we might want to do. So we would add additional I make the, I make the motion that we continue with the program. Okay, do we have a second? Blake, okay. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? So carry. I think that's all I have. You're doing wonderful, Melinda. Oh, nice work. <laughs> and we did um, spend all the CRAC money. That's that's gone. So now we're using YSB to pay um, Allison. Okay, good. Um, now, now we have sponsoring the ski trips for next year. That's Allison, correct? I've done my research, yes. So there are a couple of different avenues that we can go down. Um, we can do a group rate. It's somewhat discounted. It's not really, there isn't very much incentive really to do a group unless you're doing rentals. Um, so then I looked into another idea. So they have rooms that you can rent for the day and they go for $350 for a day session, $250 for a night session. So my initial thoughts were, if we coordinated that with families and students, so the families would provide the transportation, um, we could provide the room for, as a stomping ground, like a base for the families and students to just have as a safe place for their belongings, to eat, to bring food. Um, that might be a better value for everybody um, in addition to the group rate. So what are you talking for total money? Um, you have to send them the dates that you are planning on um, going or like a range. So I didn't uh, get a formal quote on the group rate. So I would say for now, regular rate, unless you did multiple trips, but I really don't think that that's feasible, especially if we're talking with transportation from the families, which would be the best route, I think. Um, maybe just $350 to 
secure room as the home base for everybody. And this wouldn't be until this wouldn't be till next year. So, but at least we have an idea of what to do going forward so that we're not waiting the last minute. Yes. Okay. What if, why are you thinking of family transportation so that they come and go at their own time? Yes. And you have parent guidance um, in case anything anything were to happen Mm -hmm. um, safety wise. I just think it's, a better route for something that active on a mountain. And and I also think it's good to have the families do something with their children. I think Uh it's a nice family activity. A lot of people can't do that. So I think, and. Well, my thought process is if you had, if you rented the room and it was for, let's say four to six hours. Okay. But you had a bus that packed up family students family whoever that went and they were there for that four to six hours or um but you're talking massachusetts aren't you yes Mm -hmm. yes okay yeah so that's uh, paying a bus driver for quite a quite a while Do, do they give you a time frame for the use of this room is it um it just says so it says the weekdays are nine to three and the weekends are 7 30 a.m to 3 p.m you can do a combo day and night but that's a long day for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for kids yeah, I, was, I was just thinking of you know one big bus with families on it not not i'm trying not trying to exclude the families i think mm-hmm. that's a wonderful idea but um just having you know a dozen cars going up uses a lot more fuel than a bus I kind of (laughs) maybe is that possible to do Adam to uh, Um, get a bus I I think it's possible especially with parents driving the only thing that I might add is it might be good to have a uh, hire somebody who is a lodge skier they are available around the area of the room and they are there for a resource and we would pay them for the day. Uh, we would have to pay them transportation to and from the location, but I think that we have that element of supervision. Uh, and uh, Melinda, I don't know whether you're gonna take on that responsibility, but uh, if you're going up, that's fine. But I always like it if you have you know, somebody else who might be available. And then we could also think about you know, if there's any uh, medical supplies we need or some other things that are happening. But uh, this is a great start, Allison. And uh, I, I, I really like that idea. And, uh, you know, we could have a, a whole bunch of people coming up. So that would be great. There are bigger rooms. There are larger rooms for um, up to 100 people. I don't anticipate 100 people, but they range from 15 to 100. So I was looking at the 30-ish range, but you can yes. go larger for just a little bit more. Um, they have one that's a $400 rate. And, you know, this is something that also reaches out to families. And we've talked about, you know, having programs that bring children and families together and, you know, having a great experience. You know, nice research, Allison. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Anybody have any questions? Yes, Stephen. I've been having people ask me about a chess club. Uh, Mm -hmm. After school activity for uh, fifth and sixth grade. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Suffoletto actually did tell me about that. And I actually do have chess boards, which we could do um, in May. Okay. The only other thing I'm having an issue with, Stephen, is I need someone who can teach it because I have no clue and I and I don't have any idea. Mr. Ward did it before. But I don't think he's available right now. So Mrs. Suffleta was supposed to send out an email to the staff to see if anyone knows how to play chess. Blake, you so, have something? If you wanted me to, I could show them. Blake? Yeah, really? I've been yeah, I've been playing for a little that'll while. That'll be that'll be great. 
Melinda, you and Blake need to talk though. <laughs> Blake, you and I will be talking. <laughs> okay, sounds good. When I was younger, I was in a chess club and we actually used to travel around the state to various clubs and start a ranking process where you could be ranked. And that that's a fantastic idea. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. yeah. So just going to say. If I was to do chess, I would want two people. So Blake, do you know anybody else? Or Chris, can you teach it? <laughs> I, doubtfully, <laughs> I, I could try. Because I do actually have the chess. Um, it actually shows what it's like teach, teaching chess. It actually has um, the directions it can go on the, on the pieces. I have those and then I have regular chess kits. So I don't know, we can look into this further, uh, Blake. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> Anything else? Yes, Stephen. You're full of ideas today. <laughs> also people have, I, I think I heard you guys say something about a Lego club or that's already going on. Yes, that's great too. That's gonna be happening in the next, uh, March 21st, I believe is the first day. For what grade? Grade two. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Uh, next item is uh, YSB and DCF priorities. Nothing. Okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, yeah. The next one. Yeah. Okay. Next. No, not on this uh, subject. Okay, nope. COVID-19 outside activities and so forth. Uh, is this on number 10, the activities? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, you know, the mask, uh, mask is optional and uh, we're following, uh, you know, the guidelines that have been produced by uh, Department of Public Health and the State Department of Education and uh, you know, the CDC. So, uh, you know, things have opened up and there's more options. I also wanted to mention that we're in the final stages of, uh, we're measuring for putting in the uh, pavilion and that'll be a 20 by 40 foot, uh, you know, classroom out on the playground. And, you know, Melinda, that, that's gonna be very helpful for spring and, and fall and summer activities. And uh, it's going to, I think, add another dimension to being able to, you know, add programs in a, in a, in a nice environment. So uh, we hope to have that in after the April vacation pending, uh, you know, approval of all of the, you know, uh, issues. Okay. And the last thing is the juvenile justice update. Now, there was something in our packet that was very interesting. Unfortunately, all well, of the yes, workshops were in February. There, uh, yeah. of course, DCF is, is trying to do a landscape analysis mm -hmm. of all JRBs and YSB statewide to determine the viability of them improving service access and matching as well adapting research-based standards and decision support tools. And I just sent out a chart with the agenda and then there's the landscape analysis for YSB there's eight priorities that they mentioned and the JRB they're looking at uh, 11, uh, you know, uh, activities. Now, as you know, we do have bylaws for our YSB and we have bylaws for our juvenile review board. And this was a very important step that we took during the first year of creating the Youth Service Bureau LPC. And Melinda, you were back there when we started and uh, we did, we wound up spending hours on making sure that we had a document that would help us 
And of course, Rachel was aware of that at the time. And Diana, I think we shared, you know, some things with you. So that has been the basis of our success. Now, this landscape analysis, I feel that if we were to produce our bylaws for both groups, that we would be able to um, show the state that uh, we have developed the processes and procedures that match their priorities. Are there any questions from anybody? Melinda, you need to unmute. <laughs> I actually just received an email from uh, Connecticut Youth Service Association about completing the landscape analysis survey. Adam, is that something you want to do or do you want me to complete it? No, you can you can say some more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that something uh, that will you share what you present uh, what you presented at the next meeting? Um, yeah, I think it's just like what we think is in our town issue wise, um, if I remember correctly. Okay. Yeah, which of the following? All right. Oh, this is different. Is there anything else to come before this board? No? If not, welcome aboard, Rachel. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Rachel. Yep. And our next meeting will be Wednesday, April 13th at 5 o'clock, I assume, still a Zoom meeting? Yes. Okay. Oh, really quickly, before we um, adjourn, I'm sorry about the okay. CRAC grant. I just want to do a quick update. I completed the three-day course, the eight-hour pre-work, and I'm working on the eight-hour post-work for the mental health first aid training. So I'm officially an instructor to certify adults in mental health first aid. So um, I'm looking to see, they said that there are grants available to train adults but it runs typically $170 to $180 per person, not including um, paying the instructor, which it's me, so that's not necessary. But um, it's once I finish the post work, they'll give me more definitive costs so I can present that at the next meeting. But I just wanted to let you know that um, I can start probably by next month. I have all of the resources. So um, how we want to use the CRAC grant, train teachers, staff members, community members it's something to think about in the relatively near future Is yes and allison uh, paying you to run the workshops so uh, we can handle 175 dollars a workshop or whatever that is and this is an important priority because it extends uh, mental health uh, you know uh, awareness and that's that's part of our goal and mission here okay is that something that can be um, offered to the fire department? That's what Melinda was saying. It's a hundred, actually, it's a hundred seventy dollars per per participant, which is kind of steep, but it's a three year certification. So anyone who attends a workshop by me, um, it would probably be either a blend of virtual or in person. Actually, they find virtual to be um, a better format. The, the uh, hundred, yeah, the hundred and seventy-three dollars is for the three years, then, right? Per person, yes. Yeah, so per attendee, yes. So we have uh, some professional development money and other things for our faculty and staff, and there's <coughs> other, there's other things that are interesting, uh, you know, because I I think that we can allocate uh, money and almost treat it, you know, as a conference for some faculty and staff. It was definitely, definitely worthwhile and eye-opening. And I know Angela talked about the suicide awareness training. Um, that was something that after, well, during my training, I emailed Melinda. They offer, it's called ASIST, ASSIST. It's through Living Works. It's a suicide training as well. And you would become an instructor in that or just be certified. And I um, was very interested in that, obviously, with, um, you know, suicide in general. Um but I would be willing to go or work with CIRAC with the suicide awareness and trainings as well. That's another component of a grant that uh, might become available. And of course, we always try to ask for additional money from CIRAC and we have been successful at times because 
of the goals and objectives of this group and our organizational structure. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right, if there's nothing else, I will adjourn this meeting at 546. Thank you, everyone. See you next month. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.